Y'all, thank you very much uh, for coming. As you know, we, are, we now have the legislature has created a new position in South Carolina, it's the Secretary of Veterans Affairs. We have now a Veterans Affairs Department. Uh, we had a, an office in the Department of Administration, but veterans are important not only to South Carolina, but also the country and also the world. Active duty, reserve duty, and veterans, men and women who serve and are serving, are the backbone of our strength, and without them, uh, we would not be here today. So we uh, have an announcement about the selection of the Secretary of the Department of Veterans Affairs, and we'll, we'll start with General Bob Livingston, who set, headed our search committee, our former Adjutant General. General? Thank you, Governor. Thank you. This is an exciting day. Uh, today we uh, start a new chapter in uh, caring for our veterans here in South Carolina and also promoting our military in South Carolina. We truly are the most military friendly state uh, in the Union. Uh, we have a rich history and this is just another continuation of uh, promoting uh, th those who serve us so well. Uh, I want to uh, thank the legislature, I want to thank the governor, uh, for their efforts in making this uh, secretary's position a reality. And I also want to thank the selection panel. Uh, we had 10 great veterans on the panel from all services, uh, all walks of life. And uh, when we worked through the selection process, uh, we had about 25 applications. Uh, and uh, we, we kind of whittled those down, uh, did uh, about 10 interviews, and then had some suggestions for the governor to talk to. And I think y'all are going to be really pleased uh, with the final selection. But some tremendous candidates. There are tremendous people here in South Carolina that really love our military. And uh, that I just want to emphasize that. So many good people. And uh, we just appreciate the great effort. And thank you to the panel for the hard work that they went through in making this selection. Governor, thank look you. forward to hearing this selection. Thank you, General. Well, as we begin, <clears throat> I would ask that all of us remember our friend and colleague Howard Metcalf, who passed away recently, and keep his family and him in your hearts and prayers. Uh, Howard was a, he was a fine man and certainly stood tall for our military, and we'll miss him. We have 50 active, 50,000 active military personnel in our state now. We have eight major bases. We have at least 400,000 veterans. General Livingston said this is the most military friendly state in the country. And also as the great Mark Clark, General Mark Clark said after World War II, he said South Carolina has more patriotism per square inch than any place in the world. And he's been all over the world and he knew what he was talking about and his troop. So we're recognizing that. We're recognizing the fact that their services and benefits that our veterans have earned, they're entitled to, that they deserve, and we want to be sure that those are available to them we all, and their families, and we also want to be sure that their talents, training, and knowledge is harnessed and is made a part of our growing economic prosperity in South Carolina because some, those are some of the strongest people that we have. And we also hope that by recognizing the great sacrifices and benefits and service of our veterans and military personnel, that we'll inspire others to consider the military as a career, consider military service, and also consider other kinds of service to their state and country. As General Livingston said, we had a thorough, very thorough search. We were thrilled with the outpouring of interest in this position of great service to our state. And the final selection was mine, made upon recommendations according to law from the, from the committee. And I have made that selection, and that is Lieutenant Colonel Bobby Cox. Colonel Cox is here today with, with his wife Jocelyn, his daughter Reagan, his son Seth. 
He is an Army Ranger, he was, served four combat tours in Iran, earning the Bronze Star, three Meritorious Service Medals, four Army Commendation Medals, four Army Achievement Medals, and the Military Outstanding Volunteer Service Medal. At the Citadel, he earned his A.B. degree. He was a commit, cadet regimental commander of the South Carolina Corps of Cadets. That was in 2002. Went to George Washington University, got his M.P.S. in 2013, and his uh, master's M.B.A. in 2017 from the University of North Carolina. He led 50 soldiers in special operations platoons in the Middle East we planned, coordinated, and executed 20 strategic level direct action missions to disrupt terrorist cell networks. He later commanded a, a 140 soldier airborne infantry company while deployed to Baghdad, where he is also responsible for training over 300 Iraqi soldiers for security operations in the area. <coughs> Lieutenant Colonel Cox went on to work as a congressional fellow in the United States Senate and as a congressional liaison at the Pentagon. Currently, he serves as the Director of Government Strategy and Private Business in Greenville and also as a district, a member of the South Carolina House of Representatives for District 21, uh, where he was elected and served in his, his uh, initial year as he was elected by his peers as chairman of the freshman class. So what we have among these many fine candidates among our many great veterans is we have a real leader, a man of the highest moral integrity and character, and he's willing to take on this job. He'll, he'll bring the insight, energy, spark, and determination that we need in South Carolina, and we're so proud to have in abundance. With that, Lieutenant Colonel Cox. Thank you, Governor uh, McMaster, and thank you all for being here. This is a great, historic day for veterans in our state. This announcement is the uh, culmination of 10 years of hard work and bipartisanship. Uh, South Carolina, as it was mentioned, deeply respects and appreciates our military and our veterans. And with the development of this department, we can take that appreciation to the next level and continuing to make South Carolina the most military and veteran-friendly uh, state in the nation. Uh, I had the honor, as was mentioned in my uh, resume, to partake in some incredible things throughout my life, being the regimental commander of the Citadel, uh, leading soldiers in combat, serving in the State House, and I can, I can say having the honor of being nominated as the first ever Secretary of Veterans Affairs uh, just is, is hands above probably one of the best honors that I could ever, ever imagine if I could. I want to thank the Governor for his confidence in nominating me. I want to thank the selection uh, panel for their thorough search of candidates, and also want to thank all the candidates for uh, submitting their names for this position as well. I didn't uh, foresee leaving the legislature uh, this early. Uh, I had other plans, but uh, like in the military, when duty calls, you've got to answer it. So that's what I'm doing here. Uh, the way I look at it is I'm training 30,000 constituents for 400,000 veterans, constituents, and their families, and I'm ready to get to work. So mentioning families, as you can tell, I got a, I got a good looking one. Thank goodness my, the kids take after my wife. So, uh, uh, and as we know, the, uh, the military service is a family business. And uh, it's just like that with the uh, South Carolina veterans families. Uh, a quick story, when I was a young captain at Fort Lewis, Washington, I got promoted, I was in a crowd like this, thanked everyone that supported me and forgot uh, a beautiful woman standing beside me. I, I forgot to mention her. So since that day on, every time I get a chance, I mention them and, and give them credit because they're the reason I've served and they're the reason I'm able to serve. So my wife, Jocelyn, Reagan, and, uh, and Seth here. And it was very hard to convince them to get out of class today to make this announcement. So I'll tell you that right now. But uh, I am restless to get started. Uh, there is a lot of work ahead. I look forward to working with the Senate throughout the confirmation process. I look forward to partnering with the staff that are at the department and anyone else in the state who wants to help our veterans here uh, with their benefits and care. And I say this, and I close with this, to the 400,000 veterans and their families here, South Carolina is here for you. This department's mission is to care and support for those who have borne the battle, as Abraham Lincoln said so long ago about veterans. And so with me as secretary in the department, we will go forward, as it says in the Ranger Creed, and shoulder more than our share of the task, whatever it may be, 100% and then some, and serving our veterans here in the state. 
So thank you for this uh, incredible honor. Uh, God bless uh, South Carolina, and God bless our veterans. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, sir. Um, Representative, uh, congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah. I wonder if this point you didn't parachute in here, but you're like, <laughs> That's um, it. Um, this obviously is going to create an opening to your seat. Can you maybe address how that might work? Do you have plans to design or how Yeah, I was talking uh, earlier with the governor about it. I need to talk to the Speaker of the House about resigning. Um, I don't want the district to be left without representation. Uh, as short as time as possible. So I need to work through that. Of course, the emphasis will be on the, uh, the nomination process to make sure that's successful and open and, and transparent for them. But, uh, but yeah, we need to discuss that. And that should happen pretty soon because I w just like in service, I want to be all in on this process and not be uh, a foot in each, in each, uh, each position. So yeah, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll get back to you on the timeline on that, so. I think by having it at the cabinet level give, gives it uh, a, a prominence that did not exist before. The, the people who are working there now will be a part of this newly named and expanded office, and what we anticipate it will grow with the with the work, not, not immediately, but it, it will grow. But it's going to be a mighty powerful office. Having it at the cabinet level in the state of South Carolina gives it a prominence around the country that it would not have had otherwise. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, it elevates the mission. You know, we'll be able to interact on a federal level to get uh, resources from them down to the uh, to the veterans here, and also there, it'll be a, a more network approach to pull in all the nonprofits, all the goodness that we see that's happening within the state to address. Uh, large topics like homelessness in our veterans community, suicide prevention, as well as just, uh, like you said, making South Carolina a better place for veterans to come and settle here and also take care of the ones that are already in our midst. So. And my prediction is that the, the work and the visibility that will be created by this office will draw more attention to South Carolina and more attention to the great veterans, the great service men and women that we have here and will add a little bit more to the great prestige of the great state of South Carolina. Yes, sir. Any more? Thank you very much. Thank Congratulations, you. Thank Colonel. You, thank you, Jeff.